Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Solving One-Step Equations with Addition and Subtraction Part 1. So here we embark on our journey in order to understand how to solve equations. This is a journey that you will be on for the rest of the time that you ever study math. Here we're going to talk about single-step equations with adding and subtracting. Then we'll talk about a little more complex equations, then multiple step equations. Then when you get to more advanced math with you know, real life situations, the equations will look even more complex. And then later, later down the road, you can write equations for modern day stuff that we can't even solve at all. There are equations out there, many equations out there that we cannot solve at all by hand. Maybe we can use a computer to approximate the answer, but we can't even solve them by hand at all. So those equations in real life get more and more and more complex, but we have to start our journey with simpler equations. These equations, you'll be able to solve them in your head. And if you can, that's great. That's awesome. But that's not the point. The point isn't to solve it in your head. The point is for me to show you what it means and how to methodically solve an equation. Let's take an equation. Here we have the letter M, variable M, plus 2 equals 8. Now, what does this actually mean? What does this equation thing mean? It means there's some variable, some unknown quantity. I don't know what it is, but here this M is going to represent the amount of dollars that I have in my bank account to start with, right? And then this might represent a situation something like this. It might say, you have M dollars to start in your bank account, then you receive two extra dollars, after which you to have a total amount of money of $8. How much money did you initially start with in your account? So we start with M dollars in our account, somebody gives us $2, and we have a final amount of money of $8. How much money did we start with? That's what M is. Now this equation is chosen to be incredibly simple. I think all of you can look at this and know the answer has to be six because the only number that fits in here, six plus two is eight. You can look at it like this. Now, a lot of people look at equations in the beginning and they're like, well, that's so easy, I'll just do it in my head. But that's not the point. I can easily write an equation right now that you cannot solve in your head. I, I can, but there's no point to doing that. The point is for me to just impart on you, to express on you that there are many equations that we can't solve in our minds, and there are many equations that we can't solve at all. Uh, and I do mean, literally, we can't solve a lot of them in quantum mechanics, relativity, gravity, lots and lots and lots of situations where we just can write the equations down, but we cannot solve them. But these, we can. So we have to learn the rules. So what does it mean to solve an equation? Anyway, we want to figure out what that value of m is, right? Without knowing ahead of time. So here is the simplest equation I can give you. 2 equals 2. You might say, this is a dumb equation. It's just, uh, of course it's true. 2 equals 2. You all know that if some person over here has 2 uh, apples, and another person has 2 apples, then we say that this person has the same number of apples as that person. 2 equals 2. That's what that equation could represent. Now, when we write equations down, the equal sign, this equ equation is like a balance. The equal sign is like, you know, this, and here it's like a balance, you know? And here, originally when it says 2 equals 2, it's like having a box on one side with a size of 2. We can just, you know, put a 2 there. And basically the thing is totally balanced, right? Because if you have a balance and you have the same amount of weight on both sides, then it doesn't, it doesn't go either way. It's balanced. But you need to understand that with a balance, I can add or subtract anything I want to both sides of that equation. And as long as I do it to both sides, it stays balanced. For instance, let's say, let's change this equation. Right? I'll just put 2 equals 2. And then let's say that instead of this, I want to start with this, and then I'm going to add 5 to it. And then I'm going to add 5 over here. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, then the equation remains balanced, because I'm going to get 7 on the left and 7 on the right, which is again equals. So you see, I can add to both sides. And that would be the equivalent of, you know, adding something, another block to both sides or something like this. As long as I add it to both sides, it's the same amount. Everything stays balanced. If I add a little bit more to one side, then of course things aren't balanced anymore and never, nothing works anymore. So this whole process works for addition. I can add to both sides. I can also subtract from both sides. I can start with 2 equals 2. And if I want to, I can subtract 1 from both sides. What do I get? 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. The thing is still balanced. And actually, we're going to learn in the next couple of lessons that I can multiply both sides of this by some number. What if I multiply by 4? 
on both sides. Then I get eight and eight, still balanced. What if I divide both sides by two? Well, I divide this by two, this by two. I divide both by two, I get one on both sides, still balanced. So you see, I can add, I can subtract, I can multiply, I can divide both sides of an equation by any number I want. And as long as I do it to both sides, then the thing is balanced. That is the number one most important thing for you to learn in this lesson, is to solve an equation, you can do whatever you want, as long as you do it to both sides. Now going back to this, how do we solve for m? Well, let me rewrite the equation we have. m plus two equals eight. Now I give myself a little more room here. So what I have is a situation where I have m, that's what I wanna solve for, and I have a plus two, I'm adding two to it. How do I get, get rid of this two? To move it around and get it away from the m, I wanna get m by its side, by itself, on one side of the equal sign. Since I'm adding two here, I wanna do the opposite, you know? The opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of subtraction is addition. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So all we wanna do is note that we have a plus two, so we're gonna do the opposite, minus two. But if we do it to this side, then to keep it balanced, we have to do it to the other side. That's the only way it works. Now what happens over here? Well, we have m, but then we have plus two minus two. And you can think of it as two minus two is zero, so it disappears from this side because we subtracted two away. You might say, well, you've changed the equation. Well, you really haven't because you also subtracted two from the other side. Eight minus two is six. And you circle this as your answer because we knew ahead of time the answer had to be six, but now we have shown through a series of steps that this is the right answer. So the goal of solving an equation is to find the value of the, of the variable, the unknown variable, the value that makes the equation work. So when you get the answer, always put it back in and check it. If m is six, six plus two is eight, yes, it checks. When you get an answer to an equation, you will always, always be able to check it to see if it's right. If you're adding something on one side of an equation, then you could subtract and get rid of it. If you're subtracting something on one side of an equation, you can do the opposite. You can add to get rid of it. And later on, you can undo multiplication with division. You can undo division with multiplication. The goal for every case is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign, like we did here. Now, problem number one always takes the longest. So let's move along and crank through the rest with a little more, little more speed. Let's take a look at x minus one and that's equal to four. First step, rewrite your equation, x minus one, and that's equal to four. Give myself a little more space. I want to get x by itself, but I have this minus one here. How do I get rid of it? Well, I'm subtracting one. The only way to really undo it is to do the opposite, to add one. But if I do it to this side, I have to do it to the other side in order to keep it balanced. Otherwise, I've messed the equation up. Now, what do I have? On the left-hand side, I still have this x, but I have a minus one plus one. Or you can think about it if you want to rearrange it, one minus one, which is zero. But you also know that minus one plus one is zero. We've learned how to add these integers. So when you add this stuff, it just gives you zero. So this gives you zero, just like up here, this gave us zero. So it disappears. All you have is x is equal to five. Now let's check it, stick it back in here. Five minus one is four, correct. Now again, I'll, I know a lot of you guys are looking at this and thinking, well, I know the answer to this. I know the answer to this. I'll just do them all in my head. But again, I could easily write an equation down. I don't wanna waste your time, but I could write one down right now that you cannot do in your head unless you're a human calculator. Most of us are not a human calculator. So I have to teach you these steps so that when we get to a more complex equation that you cannot solve in your head, you will have practice to know how to deal with it. What about, z minus seven equals five. Let me rewrite it, z minus seven equals five. I wanna get z by itself. All right, so I'm subtracting seven, I'm gonna undo that with the opposite, which is adding seven. And I have to do it to both sides, otherwise the thing is not balanced. And it, it won't be true anymore. So negative seven plus seven, that is zero, so it disappears. And z is the only thing you have left because this is equal to zero. What is seven plus five, 12? That's the answer. Now, the answer is 12, let's check it. Go and put it back up in here. 12 minus seven is equal to five. So you verified the answer is correct. So you see for all of these problems, you are able to check and see if the answer is correct. All right, what about w 
plus 9 equals 11. So we rewrite the equation. W plus 9 equals 11. Now, what I have here is addition of 9, adding 9. I want to undo it. I want to get rid of that 9, get the variable by itself. So I'm going to do the opposite, subtract 9. I have to do it to both sides to keep it balanced. So what do I have here? 9 minus 9, well, that just gives you 0, drops away. I have only a W. What is 11 minus 9? 2. Answer is 2. Check it. Put it in here. W is 2. 2 plus 9, 11. It's correct. So, two main rules of equations. Do the opposite operation and always try to get the variable by itself. 14 equals g plus 2. Rewrite my equation to give myself some more space. Here I have g. Now notice a couple of things. g is on the right hand side of the equation. Um, now I want to stop for a second and just say that if I wanted to, I could flip the whole thing around and make it g plus 2 is equal to 11 because because an equal sign is like a mirror. All you're saying is both sides are equal to each other. So I can take the right side and put it on the left and the left side and put it on the right. So I can do that. This is perfectly fine. Um, if it helps you, do it like this. But you don't have to. You can just leave it the way it sits right here, right? So what do I have here is a situation where I want to get g by itself. How do I get g by itself? Well, I have added 2 to it. I have to do the opposite, subtract 2. So if I do that, I must subtract 2 from the left-hand side. And what is 14 minus 2? It's 12. And on the right-hand side, I have a g, but then this stuff, it just gives me 0. That's why I do the opposite. I do the opposite operation to get a 0 so that g, or the variable, is by itself. So all I have is g is equal to 12. And again, it's like a mirror. I can flip it around and say that g is equal to 12. Now check your answer. Put g in for 12 here, 12 plus 2, 14, and we know it's correct. Correct answer. All right, that was, I think, over the halfway mark. What about b minus 8 is 13? Rewrite the equation, b minus 8, 13. And what do I have here? I've got a subtraction of 8. I want to get rid of that by adding 8. That's doing the opposite. And what do I have left? On the left-hand side, I have a b, negative 8 plus 8. That gives me 0, so all I have left is b on the left. 13 plus 8, that's 21. 21, check it. Put a 21 in there. What is 21 minus 8? And that's going to give you 13. All right, home stretch. Only a couple more problems. Let's take a look at negative 1 equals f minus 6. Again, I could flip the, put this term over here and this one over there, but let's just leave it like this. Let's rewrite the equation, negative 1, and then f minus 6. So what do we have? We have f minus 6. We're subtracting 6. We want to undo it by adding 6. We have to do it to both sides of the equal sign. Now on the right-hand side, it's very easy to see what happens because minus 6 plus 6, that's equal to 0. So you just have an f left over. Over here, negative 1 plus 6, you know you subtract them. 6 minus 1 is 5, and the sign goes with the bigger absolute value, which is positive, so it's positive 5. Or in your mind, you can just flip the order of this. 6 minus 1 is 5. And now that I have it like this, I can flip it around where I say f is equal to 5, and that's it. Stick it in here. 5 minus 6 does indeed equal negative 1, and that is the correct answer. And now you can see why we spent so much time dealing with um, learning how to add integers, because we're going to use it all the time solving equations. y plus 15 equals 8. Rewrite it, y plus 15 equals 8. So because I am adding 15, I want to get rid of that, I'll do it by the opposite, subtracting 15, subtract 15. Now what do I have on the left-hand side? Well, the 15 minus 15 is 0, so I'm just left with y. Here I have 8 minus 15. I can't really do that subtraction, so just do 15 minus 8, and you're going to get what? 7. And the sign of this is going to be negative because the larger absolute value is this one here. All right, so y is going to equal negative 7. You can also think of it as 8 plus a negative 15, if you want to think of it that way. Subtract them, which is 7, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value. So you get negative 7 for your final answer. And you can check it, just like always, by sticking it there. Negative 7 plus 15. Well, that's the same as 15 minus 7, if you flip the order of it. 15 minus 7 is going to give you 8, so you know that the answer is correct. All right, what about k minus 7? equals negative 3. Let's rewrite it. k minus 7 
negative 3. Now, we've subtracted 7. In order to get k by itself, we will add 7 to both sides. And so, on the left-hand side, negative 7 plus 7 is 0. All you're left with is k. What's negative 3 plus 7? Or you can just flip it around in your mind, 7 minus 3. That's just going to be 4. You can just subtract them. 7 minus 3 is 4. The sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is positive. Now, check your work. Put the 4 in here. What is 4 minus 7? That is indeed negative 3, because the sign does go with the larger absolute value. All right, here is our very last problem. Negative 9 equals h minus 4. Let's rewrite it. Negative 9, h minus 4. Now I want h by itself. I've subtracted 4, so I need to do the opposite, adding 4, opposite, adding 4. And so on the left-hand side, what is negative 9, my, uh, negative 9 plus 4? That's going to give you negative 5 on the left-hand side. You can subtract them, and then the sign goes with the larger absolute value. This gives you 0, so you just have h. So h is negative 5. Check your work by putting negative 5 in here. What is negative 5 minus another 4? means you're more in debt, and so you're uh, negative 9 for your answer, so you know the answer is correct. So here we've done a lot. We've introduced what the concept of an equation is. I've shown you by drawing pictures and also showing you with those simple equations with numbers that you can add or subtract. If this is a simple equation, the simplest thing you could think of, adding numbers and subtracting numbers and multiplying and dividing continues to keep the thing balanced. As long as what you get afterwards is still equal to each other on both sides, then you know that what you're doing is okay. And the reason we want to show that, that to ourselves is to get these variables by themselves, we have to add or subtract both sides. And then by doing that, we have to know that we're not changing anything. And so that's why I went down that road. And then once you get the answer to solve the equation, you can always stick it back in and verify. I'd like you to solve these. It's very important that you get the right answers. If you're having trouble with negative numbers or something, then go back and review that, but come back and solve these equations. Follow me on to part two. We're going to do a little more with single step equations using addition and subtraction, but the roadmap is to then do more complex equations. And even in future math classes, you will always be solving more and more complex equations. So this is the start of a very long journey. Solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills.